guys, welcome, welcome back. My name is Kelly and today, <coughs> excuse me, we are going to make an in the hoop bag. I've been saying forever that I'm gonna do a video on this um, and I'm just now getting around to it. So this is done completely and totally on the embroidery machine. It's got some cute fabric on the inside. It sounds a little crinkly and that's because of the um, the stabilizer I used and I'll go through that as well um, but I also put a little hook on it and at some point I'm not going to do it today but at some point I'll do a video on um, doing like a um, wrist strap uh, to go with this but today we're just going to do the bag the pattern I have is from uh, Parker on the porch and um, they have super cute stuff. I will admit that this is the only um, bag I have from them, uh, partly because it's really, what is that line? Oh, it needs to be ironed. I need to iron it a little bit, and you can iron these. Um, Parker on the porch, this is the only bag I have, and part of that is because um, it, you can easily customize it, and so I just haven't really found the need to have a whole bunch of different ones, but she's got a ton of really cute stuff. I have some of her other design, like snap tabs and stuff, but this is my only bag. So this bag is, um, it's just a woven, a cotton woven, like quote cotton on the back and front. And then this is vinyl. Um, it is just quote cotton on the inside too. And you wouldn't, want to do it. it the machine handles this vinyl just fine um you probably wouldn't want to do it the whole thing vinyl that might be pretty tricky on um, your machine and i think even the instructions say to not do that um so this is i mean it's it's nothing fancy it's a pretty simple bag um, if you wanted to sell them, I don't think that you could necessarily sell them for a ton of money, but, um, they are super easy to make. Um, so I am using, so I have a girls weekend coming up, so I'm making one for everybody. So I have this one that's done and then I've already chosen my other fabrics. All of these fabrics are available on my website. Um, if you see something that you like, it's, uh, project fabrics online. Um, so this one I'm going to do, so you need, the instructions are really, really good on this one. Um, but you need to cut, follow the instructions. You do it based on your hoop size and how big you want to make it. Um, I'm doing the one, I have an eight by 12 hoop, but I'm doing the one for an eight by 10 hoop because I only have 12 inch zippers um and so the um to do a bigger bag you need a longer zipper so i have some 12 inch zippers i'll link down below where i got these just amazon i mean honestly i mean i'll link it but honestly just they're just zippers so whatever wherever you find the best deal that's where you should buy zippers um and this one was like a variety pack of different colors so i think i'm gonna do um this for the outer and this for the lining and then a gray zipper on that one and all of these are going to have the gray vinyl and the gray I guess it's really not vinyl it's the faux leather rolls from Hobby Lobby um <clears throat> so this was two bucks originally and I think I showed you guys originally I was going to use this vinyl um let's see if I can find it I th this is either Joann's or Hobby Lobby, probably Joann's. Well, actually it might be Hobby Lobby. Anyway, it's pretty soft and like luxe feeling, but I just thought the brown was a little more fall and this is a fun summer thing. So I saw the gray at, um, I don't know what I did with it. I saw the gray at Hobby Lobby and I thought, well, that kind of goes with all my colors. It's nice and cheap, you know. It was, I only buy this stuff when it's um, half off. So I got that. So they'll all have the gray vinyl. I showed you the one. Let's see, here's another one. So I'm gonna use that. This is a really pretty art gallery fabric. And then that for the lining. And then this one's gonna be for me. Um, is this 
this right? Yeah. So this for the outer and that for the lining. Um, I would use this for the outer, but I just think the design itself is a little too big. Like you're not going to get a whole lot of the um, flowers on it. And I just really love this plaid. So we're only going to make one today. Um, oh, and I have different, I lost all my zippers. What did I say? Well, here's another gray one. I think that goes, I think I decided that's going to be for mine. And then, yes. So the gray is going to go with my plaid. And then for this one, I thought um, this maroon zipper would be really cute because um, there's just a little bit of maroon in it. There we go. Yeah, you can see it. So the cool thing about this is you see a lot of the zipper, so having the different colors is kind of fun. Um, you can also do zipper tape and do fancy, cute zipper pulls. Um, again, I think I'm going to, after I make these, I am going to put them on, on Etsy. Um, and so I want them to overall be an inexpensive option. Um, I may later down the line make some uh, fancier bags um, at a higher price point. But since these are kind of the simplest bag to make, um, I thought, you know, keep everything at a low price point. Um, to be, so people can buy them for stuff like this. Like I'm going on a girls weekend. I thought it'd be super cute if we all had our little bags. People can carry them. People cannot carry them. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just for fun and a nice little gift to give family. So let's go over and let me show you. Oh, one more thing. Um, you also need, well, you don't need, this is optional. Um, you know, mine has the little, um, I lost it again kind of losing everything today. We are leaving tomorrow to go to Alaska for no reason other than we've never been to Alaska and why not? It's 4 billion D degrees here so it sounds delightful. Anyway, a bit scattered today. So this, you know, this is optional um, and it's just on there with a little scrap piece of vinyl. I am going to show you how to do that part but if you don't do it, don't do it. It doesn't matter. Um, so we'll go over to the machine um, and I'll kind of show you step by step. There are a lot of steps. It's not a um, like set it and forget it kind of project, but once you do one, it's really quick and easy. Um, so I'm going to use my um, frame that comes with the machine kind of the only time I use these um, frames is when I'm, or hoops, um, is when I'm doing in the hoop stuff. And then for um, stabilizer, hold please, I'm just gonna use some cheapy um, tearaway that I got from Walmart. So here's the deal with these bags. You can use tearaway, you can use cutaway. It does not matter. Um, like I said, the, the tearaway leaves a bit of a crinkly sound. I don't mind it, apparently. Word on the street is some people care. So, totally up to you. Um, but just like a medium cutaway works just as well. So, um, I just, I don't know. For one thing, this stuff is so cheap. Um, and I just, I like tearaway. Um, so I'm just going to hoop this, uh, let me hook it real quick and show you, and then I'll just move you over to the machine rather than, um, going back and forth and back and forth. So I know you can't see what I'm doing, but you, at this point, you know how to hoop. So the only drawback with this particular, um, stabilizer is it's a really like wide, um, roll. So I end up wasting a bunch. But again, I think, I mean, I know I got this at Walmart and I think it was like super cheap and I just grabbed it one day. Um, cause I needed something, but so no biggie. Um, okay. 
So we just hoop, hoop your stabilizer, whether it's cut away, whether it is tear away, just hoop it. So I'm gonna show you a couple things on the computer and then we'll go over to the machine. Okay, I think I kept saying I use the um, eight by 10 design and it's actually a six by 10. So my machine takes PES, so I open that up. And then the only thing I wanted to show you here is um, there is two, there's a satin stitch here on that goes on the purse at the vinyl. And then there's also this blanket stitch. You can do one or both or none. I don't know why you would do none. I guess if you wanted just a bean stitch, but I don't, I don't love the blanket stitch. I just do the, um, the satin stitch. So I'm just going to delete that. And then now it's just what I want. So let's send this over to the machine. And I will take you over there and show you all of the steps to that. Okay, so the only other thing I do to prepare for this, first of all, I do it upside down because it's just easier. You'll see why, but your lining um, comes out this way and um, or from the top of the bag. So it's much easier if your lining is here um, rather than back behind the machine. And that will make sense here in a minute. Um, so I make sure it's upside down. And then the only other thing I do is I do change the colors. I just use one color thread because the only thread you're going to see is on that satin stitch. Everything else is just construction. So I go ahead and, um, you go to there. It's all on needle one, do that little doohickey, and then you're good to go. Um, that's not something that you can do in, in Brilliance or um, it will never stop. Although, now that I've said that, does this have the stops um, built in? Let's see. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, that, close. Um, yeah, it doesn't have the stops built in. So let's put our stops in. Hang on. We did that wrong. Um, so go to edit, go here, and let's get our stops in. I just put a stop in front of everything. Okay, so now let's change our color. So everything is going to be on needle one. Close. And then let's run. So your first thing that's going to run is just a placement stitch. Okay, so a little hard to see there. Um, let me take it off and then maybe you can see better. But it ran a whole, I know I'm too close, but it ran all of these stitches. So these three right here is what we're going to focus on first. And that's where you put your zipper. Um, actually, let me keep this off and you can do it on the hoop. Hang on. Hold, please. Okay. This step you can actually still do while it's on the machine. Um, I would assume if you have a one needle, you wouldn't be able to. Um, but on this brother, you can. I just thought it might be hard to see. So if you can see my placement stitches, I should have done a darker color for you guys. But so we've got three lines here. That's where our zipper goes. Um, one edge goes here. And then this middle part is for the middle teeth. Now I will say this. Um, don't line it up with the top stitching. Uh, for whatever reason, the way it's designed, if you do that, it's off. Um, the instructions say line the teeth up with this center line, but that's pretty tricky. So, but if you line it up with this bottom row, just like just barely covering it, you should be good to go. And so what you can do um, is just tape it down and you can use scotch tape or you can use blue tape. Um, I typically just use whatever is next to me at the time. Um, but tape it down and again, just make sure that you're just 
barely covering that that bottom line and when I say bottom line I mean bottom of your bag it's not really the bottom of your hoop I guess depending on what your perspective is but I'm probably over taping here the zipper usually goes on okay um, but we'll tape it pretty good and then we'll run um, step two Okay, let me turn you so you can see. So we'll start her up again. So do you see how, um, oops, sorry. Do you see how high up it comes? Let me take it off and show you. Okay, so the stitching comes pretty close to this edge. So that's why I was saying if you would have, if I would have put it lower, which this, uh, you can't really see it, but the placement line here is a bit lower. Um, if you would have lined it up with that, it would, it, comes to the very edge of this and that's not what you want so that's why you line up this edge so now you can take your tape off um and sometimes like it it's stitched over that but it both scotch tape and blue tape just kind of peel right off and then the next step um is a little not tricky isn't the right word but it's one of the trickier steps so what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip over your hoop and you're gonna line up your um, uh, lining, one of your linings, and you're gonna make sure that it goes beyond this line, this bottom placement line. And again, when I say bottom, I mean bottom of the bag. So line it up with the bottom of that and tape it down so this piece right here is the reason why we um, did our bag upside down because this piece is gonna stay there for a long time and we need it out of our way and if you have to cram it into behind your machine it wouldn't be nice so we do that and then you flip it over and you're also going to put your um, outer fabric and do the same thing. So line it up past the zipper. And the instructions tell you how big to cut these pieces. And it depends on what size bag you're making. Um, but there's always going to be plenty of extra. And you can go cut a little if you put it too far past the zipper. But just make sure that you have enough to when you flip it over that this is gonna cover the bottom of the bag. So we tape both of these in place. And then you have to kind of very carefully, and my, from experience, I can tell you my tape is not awesome. So let me see if I can get you. So keep this out of the way. I'll show you what it looks like on the machine in just a second. Let me get it on here. Okay, so you have to make sure that this is out of the way. It is gonna stitch at right here at the edge of both pieces. And so you wanna kinda hold this out of the way for a second. So let's run that real quick. Okay, 
And that's all that step does. You can now, let's move our thing out here. Okay, you can remove all your tape now. You can do front and back. We might, I might mess with the back later. Um, but so now, the whole rest of the time, you need to make sure that this lining stays out of the way. You don't want your lining to flip up under and get caught while you're doing other steps. So what I do often is just kind of flip it up and uh, just clip it to my hoop. So we're not gonna be doing anything with that for a few more steps. So let's just get it out of the way. Okay, so for the next step, you're gonna flip this down. Oops, hang on. It's gonna move on me. Um, you flip this down, get it as smooth as you can. And what it's gonna do on this step is go all the way around your purse. So again, you wanna make sure that it's kind of um, as flat as you can get it. And I'm not gonna lie, I do kinda use my hands as it's stitching. Just be very careful. You could even get a chopstick or something um, to make sure that you don't hurt your fingers. But let's do this next step real quick. deal again I just kind of kept my fingers out of the way um, but I wanted this to be pretty smooth so the next step is going to be for the vinyl and it is just basically like an applique so this first stitch that it's gonna do is just like a placement stitch and I place it over top. The instructions give you, um, tell you what size to cut the vinyl to. I actually didn't do it just to conserve some vinyl. Um, but this, you don't really have to take your hoop off. Place it down and then we'll run our um, tack down stitch. take the hoop off and I'm going to cut around this um, just like you would do an applique. Um, I guess in theory you don't have to do it down here just yet but I am. I'm gonna go ahead and cut around the whole thing. Okay so I was about to put this back but I'll show you real quick. So I just cut around it just like you would a um, applique and then the next step is going to do a satin stitch right here. Um, I'm not going to bore you with videotaping that. I'm just going to um, have this run real quick. 
Okay, so I did our satin stitch. Um, I'm very happy I chose that blue. I think it's really cute. Um, so now we're going to tack down this lining. So you can finally get it out of the way. Take your clips off, flip it over, and then um, I do recommend uh, taping this down. Uh, you could try to hold it, but um, it gets kind of bunchy. So let's uh, get it all taped down. Whoa, hello. And then it's just gonna go around the whole bag and do a tack stitch to get this tacked down. So I'm gonna do plenty. Again, I have done it before where this part got messed up. So I'm just a little extra careful. So let me get it on the machine and then I'll show you what it looks like. Uh-oh, my tape didn't hold. Can you see? Oh boy. Um, so both of my tape and my blue tape do not hold things very well. So you know what? I'm going to take it off and retape it. Hang on. Okay, now we're good to go. I just hadn't kind of pushed down on the tape well enough, really. And I've also noticed that this particular um, stabilizer, the tape doesn't stick to it quite as well. Um, so again, it's just going to go all the way around the bag. And it's just going to hold that, um, uh, I guess that's technically your front lining. So it's holding that front lining in place. is the most important step. So let me um, take this off and show you real quick. Okay, so again, the most important step at this point is opening your zipper halfway. If you do not open your zipper halfway, and my zipper is stuck, um, you will not be able to turn your bag right side out. So it will be, uh, I, there's maybe a way to salvage it, but don't make that mistake. Open it at least halfway um, or you will be very, very sad. So now I'm going to put any hardware that you um, might like to have on it. Again, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this part, um, but make sure that you put it the right way. Whatever you want hanging off your bag needs to go inside here because everything out here is going to be cut off. So don't, don't put it this way. You know, it needs to go inside. So I like mine to be kind of short. So one thing I do um, is I go ahead, well, let me, and this is another time when the tape has a hard time sticking, but we'll press it down much better this time. Um, the other thing I do is I go ahead and tape this down because I don't want it, I don't want this part pushing too far back because again, I make mine pretty short and I don't want to accidentally hit it with my needle. So see, it's already popping up. I have the blue tape I have is pretty terrible. This is terrible. Um, to be fair, this is um, Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree tape. Let's see. Let me, let me show you my blue tape. Okay, so let's see if the blue tape holds it down better. Sometimes I just give up and hold it. Or pin it. You could pin it. See, my blue tape's not very sticky either. But that should get us going. So, now you need your um, 
your back piece, whatever pattern you want showing. Now, if you were doing um, something directional, you would need to pay attention to how you're doing this. Um, I typically don't, so it doesn't really matter. Um, see, look, look at my blue tape. It's worse than the scotch tape. Um, it just doesn't like this vinyl and it doesn't like the, um, the stabilizer. So we're gonna put that on and we are gonna tape this. I tried once not to tape this and it got a bit bunchy. So go ahead and tape it down. Since it is, you know, the front side and it's laying flat, you might think you don't need to, but it's best. I also find if I have a couple pieces where I get it on the actual hoop, then um, it sticks a little bit better. So let's put this on. What it's gonna do is it's gonna go around this and it's gonna go around three times. And you're gonna be super nervous up here by the zipper, but it'll be okay. Again, as long as you're, see there's my zipper pull right there. Um, one thing on this you wanna make sure, so you wanna make sure that you cover, we probably should have come up a little bit higher. Um, cover that zipper tape um, as much as you can. As a matter of fact, let's do that. Let's come up, now that I've done all that taping, let's come up just a smidge higher um, to give us a little bit more of a seam allowance. So more taping. And then we'll run that. stitching take it off and you're going to flip it over and let me tell you down here so flip it over um yeah I did that right sorry for a second I thought my this lining was on um backwards it's not okay so same deal you want to I know this line is kind of hard to see but you want to go up above that so you make sure you're above that line and that um, there's plenty of fabric for below here. And then in theory, we are going to tape it. Again, this tends to work a little bit better. And again, I try to just catch the actual hoop, which helps. I know there's gonna be a million people saying, why did you use this kind of tape? Or why didn't you do this? And you're probably right. Actually, I wish it was a million people. That would mean a million people watch this video. Um, okay, so just have that all taped down. And then put it back on the machine and it will run one more step what it's going to do, I will, I will video it, but what it's going to do on this step is it's going to leave a hole down here. Um, and that's where, um, along with the um, zipper section, that's where you will flip your bag. So let's run that step real quick. Ow. 
Okay, so I did not film that part because we almost had a disaster. When I put my hoop back in, it did not lock into this. So it was a little crooked. And I don't know if you can see that stitching, but I got dangerously close to hitting my zipper head, which would have been tragic. It also means that I have to go through and seam rip all of these stitches because they're way too close to the zipper. Um, honestly, this whole thing might be a disaster because um, I don't know where else it got off, but I just know for sure it got off up here. So um, let me show you how you take it off the hoop. Um, we're gonna we're gonna salvage this one way or another. So again, this is kind of the beauty of the um, the tearaway. You know, all this bazillion pieces of tape I got on here is that it just kind of comes right out. So let me do a little bit of seam ripping and then I'll come right back. All right, so I did some of it, but I think it's actually gonna be easier once I flip the bag. So I'm just gonna wait for now. Um, again, one way or another, we are gonna salvage this bag. But what we wanna do now is we wanna cut around this outer um, line. And you can just cut right through your zipper. Um, and you want it to be about a quarter of an inch. Um, again, because you're using just quilting cotton and a little bit of vinyl, um, it's not going to, you know, you're not going to have these huge, um, thick seam allowances. Whereas if you used a whole bunch of vinyl, you would. Now, I almost made another mistake. You are going to be turning your bag um, inside or right side out down here where there's a hole. So there's a hole between your two lining pieces. You want to do some angle cuts right here. Don't cut it all the way to a quarter just yet, or at all, really. Um, these, your um, outside pieces you can, but leave your lining pieces um, wider because you need something. We're going to glue it together, um, and you need something for the glue to um, grab onto. You need something to turn under, basically. So let's get rid of all of this. And then we're gonna do the same down here and you can do it, um, you can see the little um, reinforcement stitches and you can do it right there. And then this part, you still got a little too much. You can probably cut it down to an inch, half an inch maybe. So cut that off and that's just my lining. And then we'll continue to cut about a quarter of an inch around the rest of it. Okay, now up here, if you left it really far above your um, zipper, you might wanna um, cut just a little of the bulk off. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, but you don't want to cut your actual zipper tape, really. I mean, if you did, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but we'll just get rid of a little bit of that bulk. So then this is what you have. And again, this is my lining piece. So I'll take my lining and I've, they've got this nice little hole there and I'm going to flip it right side out. And then we'll be able to see where our zipper is. Now, I should have probably said earlier, there are instructions with the pattern that if you have um, used cutaway instead of tearaway, there is a step where um, you may want to go ahead and have already removed this part um, because all of this, um, Interfacing has to come out. So see, now I'm gonna have to go through and I'm gonna have to seam rip some of this where um, my stitching uh, got messed up. But basically, you wanna remove all of this tearaway stitching. So see, had you not opened your zipper, 
halfway, you wouldn't have a hole here to flip your, um, flip your bag the right way. So actually, I'm not even sure I need to do any more seam ripping because I don't think, it, because it's just the lining, I'm not sure it's gonna matter. We'll flip it and see. But just get all that tear away. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to do some seam ripping. So this is where my hoop was um, not in the machine properly. And I got way too close to the zipper. So let me fix that just real quick. All right, so much better. In the end, not a huge deal. I was right. It was um, much easier to remove those, um, the wrong stitches with the bag um, like this. So there we go. That's what we should be looking like here. Um, we got a little more stabilizer here. So now you could go ahead and glue your bottom. Um, I do like to go ahead, especially since I made a little mistake here, I wanna go ahead and flip it all the way um, right side so I can make sure that it's um, looking pretty good. So let's flip it. And you could use, these aren't really difficult to flip but um, and get the corners out, but if you wanted to, you could use like um, chopsticks or a knitting needle or whatever to get your corners out a little better. Um, but again, it's uh, not too terrible with just this quilting cotton. Okay, we did not ruin the bag. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, these are really easy to iron. So if it's looking a little, you know, you might want to massage this down a little bit to get it to where it's not showing as much. And then iron the whole thing. That'll give you a much cleaner look. Um, but let me show you. I've got some threads to cut and stuff. But um, doesn't look like my little hiccup there is going to cause us any major issues. Looks like I got a few more stitches right there at the end of the zipper that I need to fix. Um, but I'll do those after um, I show you the lining. So, the lining. I am one of those people that doesn't like to glue anything. Like, I like to sew everything. But you would not want to sew this shut. Um, it just, you'd be able to see the stitching on the right side of the bag. So what I do, so this is why you left these bigger or, or wider so you could tuck them in. And then what you do is you just take your favorite uh, fabric glue. I have this Fabric Fusion. It works really well. Um, you're going to, again, tuck it in fairly nicely and it does kind of naturally fall. Again, you might have to massage that vinyl just a little bit to get it to where it's like that. And you just put some glue in there and then add some clippies. You could pen it if, if you have pens. Um, so I'm not gonna do it right now. I've already made too many mistakes today to do more on camera. Um, I don't think I would make a mistake with the glue, but you never know. So you glue this, you let it sit for about 30 minutes, and then you have yourself a bag. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'm gonna let this glue dry, and then I'll have my second bag done. That was almost a disaster. I mean, had it hit that zipper pull, it would have ruined my needle one, which would have been tragic. But that's how you make these super cute little in the hoop bags. They come in lots of different sizes. Um, if you only had a four by four hoop, you could make a little coin purse, which would be super cute. Um, and they have a lot of other nice designs on their website. It's called Parker on the Porch. Um, that is it for today. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye.